Namaste, welcome everyone to Satsang today here in Rishikesh. And uh, of course, welcome to all of you who are joining via broadcasting wherever you are in the world. So, one full Sangha. And um, just full welcome here. I, I actually was looking forward to Radha coming to sing something today. And uh, is it still okay to come? Come, please. And then, uh, okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, so Radha is going to sing a song. Uh, yeah, it's a bhajan by Sant Ganeshwar, and she has written it uh, for, as a translation in English. So I will read it. It says here, "Do I call you?" The one with attributes or without attributes. With or without attributes, you are the only one, Govinda. Do I call you as gross or subtle? Gross or subtle, you are the only one, Govinda. Do I call you as form or formless? Form or formless, you are the only one, Govinda. Do I call you as the seen or the unseen? Seen or unseen, you are the only one, Govinda. Go in the 
सगुणमणो की निर्गुण रे तुझ सगुणमणो की निर्गुण रे तुझ स्थूलमणो की सूक्ष्म रे तुझ स्थूलमणो सगुणमणो की निर्गुण रे तुझ सगुणमणो की निर्गुण रे तुझ करुमणो की निराकार रे तुझ आकारुमणो रे आकारो निराकारो एक गोविंदो रे आकारो निराकारो एक गोविंदो रे तुझ सगुण मनो की निर्गुण रे तुझ सगुण मनो प्रसादे ज्ञान देव बोले निवृत्ति प्रसादे ज्ञान देव बोले बाप रकम देवी वरु विठलू रे निवृत्ति प्रसादे ज्ञान देव बोले बाप रकम देवी वरु विठलू रे तुझ सगुण मनो की निर्गुण रे तुझ सगुण मनो की निर्गुण रे सगुण निर्गुण एक गोविंद रे सगुण निर्गुण एक गोविंद रे एक गोविंद रे तुझ सगुण मनो की निर्गुण रे तुझ सगुण मनो की Namaste, Kuti. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, I've been following you for a few years, and through your pointings, I found great peace and feeling at home. Uh, but in this season, I, I feel a strong urge to stand in front of you. Uh, when you say, 
uh, I am life. Uh, it shakes me greatly. But shake you? Shake? Yeah, okay. some yeah, okay. I can feel, you know, strong. Mm. But still, I don't have a deep understanding. No, I am life. Because when I move in my life, I feel some tiredness. Still, I feel some tiredness. Mm. If you were not alive, you would not feel tiredness. Alive and life is one thing. In the play, you, you, we were just listening to a beautiful song. It speaks of, you know, am I, I will look at it again and something, because I feel it is relevant to your question a little bit. Mm. Do I call you the one with attributes or without attributes? With or without attributes, you are only one, Govinda. No. Uh, do I call you as form or formless? Form or formless, you are the only one. Mm, there is a, the term Nirguna, Brahman. Brahman means actually pure, the pure self. And yet it is being mentioned here, Saguna Brahman, Nirguna Brahman. Please just don't try too hard. I'll try to explain, keep it simple. Uh, Saguna Brahman means that, uh, that pure self which is manifest with um, qualities, qualities as is appearing in the realm of uh, duality. Duality meaning whatever manifests with this and that, opposite qualities. You cannot know something is good unless you have a sense of what is bad, or something to be true unless you have a sense of what is untrue. These interrelated opposites, hmm? we come to gauge with the power of discernment whether something is true or untrue, that is right or wrong, that is high or low, that is small or great. This is all this functioning that comes with these, the ability to make distinction between one thing and another thing, that exists in what we call the Saguna Brahman, meaning sometimes you may have heard me say, uh, this is all appearing inside the theater of consciousness, the Leila of God where we have a sense of yourself as a living entity amongst maybe billions of other entities call you, you call you, 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 but here you say I. The one that is perceiving other, we say I. But even though I see one that I perceive and I say other or you, from that you place, it only knows itself as I also. And it is perceiving itself as I, looking at me, referring to me as you. So the I is consistent in all the forms he is perceiving, but because it believes itself to be this particular form, I am this particular form, and it sees other forms, so other forms became you. But in each form it is arising as I. So in this field of dynamic changes and coming and going and life and death and heaven and hell and gods and demons and all of this play, I call it the functioning of consciousness, of perception, the theater of God. I call this, you say, this is the Saguna Brahman in expression. Nirguna Brahman also now is referring to that principle beyond form, beyond attributes. When, you are, when I'm pointing you in satsang, but you can see all of this, something happened, whatever it is, if it's a thought, or a feeling, a sensation, an idea, a concept, different time and so on, something perceives all of these things, but the one that is perceiving is not caught in the bubble of the things perceived. Then I say, are you not clear that you are watching here? But the one that watches or notices everything in the world, everything that 
appears in the waking state when the consciousness is there whatever appears the perceiver of them hmm? there must be a perceiver saying I can see this I can feel this I can think this I can discern this this eye which can perceive all these things can this one also be perceived this was my question it still is a living question hmm? that which is perceiving all things the sense of yesterday, the sense of beauty and of ugliness, tiredness, dynamic activity, you perceive everything. No? The perceiver of all these things, can this perceiver be itself perceived? Meaning what? Is it itself an object of perception that can be perceived? And consider, if this one who can perceive, who is perceiving everything, is, can, can be itself perceived, by what is that perceived? <laughs> it's not just a riddle, ah, because some people have very, very sharp intellect and they love the ah, yeah, oh, I love it, ah, you know? It's not for that, it's not for entertainment, it is for self discovery, you see? Because uh, this is not a question that can be satisfied with a conceptual answer. Like, yes, it can be perceived by the Supreme. Yeah. And uh, who, who, who knows the Supreme to answer this question? You see? So, this is not a question for uh, just uh, uh, spiritual entertainment for the mind. It is really for the one who really has come to a place like you. I can ask you this question, you see? Hmm? Because now you say, you, you say that I say, but you are life. But I continued, I said, you're also the witness to life, isn't it? Or you only heard the first part. I said, you are not just living life, you are life. And at the same time, the displaying of life, the functioning of life is also perceived by you. So if even life is perceived, by what is it perceived? So, don't go for the answer yet. Allow the question to search you. What will it find? That which is perceiving all things, is it, is it tangible or intangible? Is it a form or is it formless? And who is going to answer this question? The one in whom that discovery, that understanding is revealed, not just from a clever intellect. Because many people may say, yes, it's from this, it's from that. But I say, maybe conceptually your answer is correct, but experientially you have not found it. Maybe you tell me only an answer you have read in a book or something. But you have to discover it. So you said just now, when I say you are life, it's something disturbed. But I said, but there's awareness of a sense of disturbance. Hmm? Yes. Is that disturbed? So it is aware of something that feels disturbed, and the thing that feels disturbed is the idea you are holding on to that you think you are that. You are this person who feels disturbed. You see? But there is a deeper awareness that can watch that feeling of disturbance and don't buy into it. It is only another sensation. Why to identify? So therefore, I ask you, be careful. Don't be so quick to get pulled into a shape do anybody understand what I'm speaking when I say like that? Yeah. Don't be so quick to go into shape, because when you go into shape, you come into limitation. When we go into shape, like a reflex, something goes into shape, you become a person again. And the person cannot grasp what I'm speaking. The person itself is perceived. Is this too much? If you continue listening, then you keep watching what, who you are as I speak, you see. 
because presently we are taking ourselves to be our conditioned identity, which itself is a construct, a kind of psychological construct. But even any construct, even of a personality, hmm, itself is something observed. And that personality is not consistent. Whatever you can see, come and go. How can you be the thing which come and go? If you are the thing that come and go, when it goes, you would also be gone. But you are here to witness, ah, now that's gone. So you I'm interested in, can you go? You are witnessing that all things can come and go. Even your favourite concept, your favourite thought, you cannot maintain unbroken contact with it. It also come and go. But you, do you come and go? Who are you? This is my question, you see. And for this, an introspection must happen, a, a, a looking. How many yous are there? How many eyes are there in you? Not talking about this eye sometimes. Who? How many eyes is in you? Sri Ramana Maharishi says something. He say, the eye removes the eye, yet remains the eye. What is he talking about? How many eyes are there? We know there's two up here, but that's not what he's talking about. The eye removes the eye, yet remains the eye. The paradox of self-realization. No? What eye removes what eye? The natural intuition in you, the sense I am, which donates I exist, removes the I me, which is the de developed condition sense of myself, that is removed, and the original I remains as it is. It's one way of saying it amongst many other ways of saying. So let's come back to you now. Your statement is still alive? Yeah. <laughs> So something is disturbed by the thought, I am life. Okay. Okay. I am life is also idea. I am life is an idea. I am not life is also idea. I am life. You are life. <laughs> is an idea. The reaction to I am life is also an idea. Watched in a deeper consciousness that is not reacting to these words. Something is disturbed by these words. I say, you are life. So something is disturbed by that. It's feeling, I don't like that. Because when you say life, I see life as strife. And when I perceive life as strife, uh, someone doesn't like it. Could you say something else that I might like? Well, whatever likes or dislikes is also something observable. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so now I say to you, whatever is observable, if you call it life, whatever, it is an object of perception, effectively, isn't it? That which perceives life or any other thought, hmm? can that be perceived? That which is perceiving, which is seeing or noticing, can that be noticed? And if it can be noticed, by what can it be noticed? If you are attracted to this question, you are down to your last days. You may not survive today. Was, Scared? Yeah. No, no. I was trying to uh, look, but I, somehow I couldn't go beyond with this question. Okay, which so question? Just, Remind which question uh, now? Like, perceive or, uh, by what it can be perceived, something like yeah. Yes. Well, the fact is, it is perceived. Even if you don't know yet, 
by what? The fact that whatever it is is perceived, meaning that whatever is perceiving it is separate from it. Is true or not? Is anybody going to answer me? Okay. If I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking at my hand, my hand is not looking at me, I don't think. I'm looking at the flowers. They are objects in my perception. I am not the flowers looking at me. That's a natural feeling inside. So whatever you are perceiving from the standpoint of the feeling of I perceiving, whatever is perceived in you is an object in your perception. Whether that object is a thought, or some roses, or a feeling, they are perceived and they come and go. Yesterday, or this morning, yesterday, you had the many feelings about things. You met different people, you ate something, all of these things was real in the moment. Today, now, where are they? As best you can say, they are only some fragments retained in memory. Can I go back from yesterday and take some of my experience from yesterday and give you a sample of my experience from yesterday? It's gone. The feeling I have with someone looking and saying, yes, yes, it's so nice to meet you, oh, it's so nice. Where is it? It's gone. Everything is like that, it's gone. At best, maybe some impressions, some, some sensations are so much you like them, or hate them, same kind of thing, they get registered somewhere in consciousness and stay in memory somewhere. And they are contributing to the collective sense of who you take yourself to be. But not everything. You go out and you walk down the road, uh, so many things are happening, your eyes physically could see them, your smell can pick them up, your touch, your taste, your mind can think of them, like this. But yet, you can walk all through that to the end of the market and you have not purchased any thought or any sensation. Meaning that you could look at them, but you didn't log into anything because you are not particularly interested in anything. As soon as you are interested in something, it begins to almost write itself into your mind. I'm not saying be aware. No, this is just natural, I'm only speaking natural thing. Yeah? We are remembering the things that seem important to us, and they leave some impression or some footprint in the consciousness. It is simple. I'm not making this up. You know it very well. You see? So it's not the... F Suppose everything you see <coughs> took photograph. Every smell <coughs> developed something. You would use up all your gigabytes. You would not have any space left. <laughs> the fact is that there is some power in you that doesn't have to close your eyes to stop catching things. The eyes can be open, the, the ears are open, the senses are open, mind is open, and yet the mind is not shopping through the senses to collect, to purchase sense objects. This is the wonderfulness of consciousness. The wonderfulness of consciousness. Did you get up in the morning and turn your consciousness on? No. It, Actually, waking up happens, and then the play of perception is happening, and something is aware, there's consciousness functioning. You don't think like that, but that's what's there. So now you say, I, this thought come. Oh, now the last thing you are saying is that w the question, when I ask the question, something is perceiving everything, at least in the waking state, what you call waking state, the functioning, the happening, the possibility of perceiving is activated and uh, you are perceiving. Supposing you said, today I have decided I am not going to experience. No experiencing today. Can you make that happen? Hmm? Unless you, you take a sleeping pill or something like that, or you know? But as long as the consciousness is awake, somehow in this waking state consciousness, functioning is happening, perceiving is happening, you automatically know you exist and that you are perceiving spontaneously. It is just happening, no? Yeah. Is there not a deeper place within you that is aware that you are awake and that you are perceiving and all of this? You're walking through the marketplace and, uh, yeah, hello, how much? 
What? 200 rupees? No way. Okay. And uh, is there not some awareness in you that's not shopping? That's not going, oh, 200 rupees? Like, that you're just aware? It's not participating in any activity that is happening in the consciousness, mind and body? This place I'm interested to see if you are aware that you are there, here. And that this is your continuous, fundamental, effortless nature. And yet, that's your Nirguna Brahman. And your Saguna Brahman, creative thinking, I want this, I'm going here, I'm going to satsang, I'm meditating, all of these things are happening. Nirguna Brahman, there's an awareness also of this functioning in the Saguna dimension but it is not participating. Are you aware of this place? And at the moment, if you are aware of this Nirguna Brahman, hmm, is it a place that you visit? Is it your best holiday place? Where you can go where nobody else is but you? I can stop all this, right? If you want to talk about bananas and ice cream, I won't. I won't talk about that. But if you are with me and you are following me, I will stay and I will talk with you. Okay? Because I am not here to entertain you. I am not feeling uh, to go out and coming back, but something, I am feeling more like something obscure. Now the feeling is felt that this Nirguna Brahman, your pure awareness, appears to be obscured hmm, by something. Which means that for that to happen, you must have an idea that you are somewhere apart from this, which is I'm calling the Infinite Self, and something is blocking the Infinite Self from being perceived. Can that be true? Where are you? Where are you? If I say that which I'm speaking of, as the unchanging, do you have a sense that that is infinite? Or is it finite? Does it have a shape or a limit? Is it imaginary? No, I can feel it, but yeah. You can feel it as what? As, as a um, feeling? As a, some space. Is it a feeling? There is a feeling, feelings change. Uh, feelings change. Suppose it is a oh, the most blissful feeling. Oh, oh, Nirguna, Nirguna, love. Yeah. Can you can it stay with you? No. Feelings may appear in it, but it cannot be defined as a feeling. Not even a feeling less feeling. Let's get subtle. Hmm? Not even that. Even the light of a million suns, can that light it up? Can darkness cover it? Talk with me. How far away from you is it? Let's talk inches or what you like, inches or centimeters? How far from you is it? Where is this Nirguna Brahman? Where is this field of awareness that is obscured by something? Where is it? In which direction? North? South? West? Inside? Outside? Where is it? You see, this is what happens when we speak from the mind. The mind is your favorite place. It is the place where we hang out when we have the feeling of identity and personhood and separateness. We are comfortable with our mind. The mind says, I'm trying to get to Nirguna. Can you show me? I said, well, uh, Nirguna, mm. that's a difficult one. You, you actually are in Nirguna. <sighs> yes, I know that intellectually, but I want to know it experientially. How are we going to talk with you? 
What is Nirguna Brahman? Is it a mental construct? Is it a feeling? How do you come to know about this awareness space? You feel you are separate, and because you feel separate, something seems to get in the way, like an eclipse. An eclipse must, must admit to at least three components. There is the, the one who wants to see, the object that it wants to see, and the object that blocks it from seeing the object it wants to see. Is that not what eclipse is? Yes. Can awareness be the thing you want to see? Being blocked by what? The old thing is ridiculous, because it is how the mind cannot... That's the best the mind can do, because you have a sense that, look, I am here, I am here, okay? And I am trying to get to the Self. But every time I try and I meditate, really, I come so close to the Self, so close. <laughs> but then something just comes and I can't get there. You know how many conversations I've had like that? They don't go anywhere. So I am just trying to clear it up, not as a chess game. I am just trying to show that you are looking from a position that you imagine you are. Actually, the place that you are looking from, saying, I am trying to get to this place, but it is cloudy, the place you are looking from, and the, the person you think you are looking as, they are both construct from in the mind, watch from the very place I call awareness. I'm going to try again. That was a bit too much. Okay. <laughs> the one who is searching for awareness is appearing in the awareness itself. <laughs> Should we go home early today? No. <laughs> I am. Home. I. <laughs> eh? Can it can it be understood with the mind? In other words, as long as awareness seems to be a goal, it is a mental construct. You are nothing other than awareness itself. Even if you are meditating, I am meditating. What for? To try and uh, recognize yourself? Recognize okay, all right. Mm. So the meditator. The goal of the meditator, I mean what the meditator want, and the very act of meditation hmm, are functions perceived in the awareness that is trying to reach. You are meditating to try and find the place you are looking from. Is it fun? <laughs> or is it frustrating? No, no, no. I feel like it's like I'm already here just but just person asking questions. Sorry? You 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 said that you feel that you I you're feel already... I'm I can feel my presence. You're aware I, I'm already yeah. know I like I'm here. Yeah. As what are you here? You say, I know I'm here. As what? Just a person. I can, uh, I can see everything, what's going on here. Okay. As. But you who can see everything that's going on here, are you yourself an activity that's going on? Are you looking from an active place or a passive place? A pass passive place. Yes. As someone looking? No, I can find someone. No. You cannot find someone. That, does that mean you're looking as no one? Don't we not don't give it to the mind, okay? Be 
present with each word that you speak. Mm. Okay. Okay. We can. Uh, you feel we're getting somewhere, or you want to take a little rest? Okay, take a little rest, and then maybe I pick, catch you again for a moment. Okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Somebody coming up. Are you coming up as an individual? Come. Who is coming? You're going, you want to say? Okay, you come. Say something. Mm -hmm. Go on. It's okay. Let him come. Uji Baba, I'm so grateful to be here with you and Thank all these you. wonderful beings. Um, this melting that's happening and shift that's happened is um, everything you're saying is so clear and so simple. And I, I, two days ago, you said something I've heard you say a thousand times. Someone was at this microphone and they were very identified with their person. And you pointed at them after a while and said, I see you as self that doesn't know you're the self yet. Mm. And all of a sudden, this perspective shifted of me knowing that that's the truth and realizing that I had been having experiences of self in my experience, quote unquote. It's hard to use language since this has happened. Um, and every time the mind comes up, I would invalidate who I am because if I have a mind, I can't possibly be the self. Like that was the, the trickery. And since that time, I'm just walking around and every thought that comes up, I just notice that it's, it's like observable from this deeper place. Everything is observable. Everything is observable. Instead of it being my reality or yeah. how I, or something like that. Yes. It's hard to put words to this. Is the noticing of everything appearing also noticed or not? Even the act of noticing that everything is observable, the noticing that everything is observable is also observable or not? No. That's it's just happening. That? It's happening. It's just happening. That things are happening is observable or not? Oh, yeah, I guess it is. Yes. <laughs> yes, because then I have the thought, oh, wow. I'm, I'm for the first time noticing that I'm noticing everything. Or observing that I'm observing. Yes. And yes. the one who is noticing everything, can this one be noticed? Don't go to the mind, no. You're getting more subtle, little subtle, hmm? that uh, the noticing, you know, that, uh, you know, I can notice everything, is that ultimate noticing also noticed or not? And who is there noticing? Is that ultimate one really interested in the noticing? Yeah, or is it, is it affected by the no, noticing? No, no, mm. it's not. Even the good things that I notice, like walking in line to come to satsang, passing the beings and just tears coming down, seeing all these, be you know, even that was like, that was just that, and then it goes. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. <laughs> no, that is sane. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll take that, I'll take that. Uh, it's a crazy uh, sane, okay, well, for crazy now. crazy compared crazy to sane. my mm. whole history of the living. The point is, yeah. where does this lead to, you see? Where does this lead to? I don't know. And I, I, I will share a little bit. <laughs> Meaning, why are we pursuing this line of, of, you know, of introspection? For what reason? Just for fun? Well, actually, 
when you come to that ultimate place that uh, you know, which is right here, I can't say which direction, it's right here, it's always right where you are actually. When you come to that place, which we can say it's like stop, but it's not stop and it's not going, it just is. It's not a place with road maps, there are no maps there. Hmm? So, finally, all the intentions of the mind and the identity behind it trying to do something is seen as just the dance of the manifestation. And that doesn't say, oh, pff, it's all rubbish then, because that would mean that there is someone who regards it as rubbish. It's not rubbish, it is just seen that it is not a definition of what is here. And when this is known, unexpectedly, a great unburdening takes place. The sense of there's something I have to do to get to this place falls away. You are here. And I ask the people who have come to this place, are you dead? No. Is it boring? <laughs> no. Oh, it's entertaining? Uh, no. Is it blissful? Bliss seems to be happening. Is it blissing? Um, no, cannot be said to be like this. I mean, you know, is it, um, is it perfect? <sighs> the word perfect is, is not, it's, it's, it's a concept, and this is not a concept. So, does it mean now there is no purpose to living? Um, <laughs> Uh, there is no conflict with life. Life is expressed from here and is caused from here. And this is the most touching thing I can tell you. For some strange reason, Such a great joy and peace and love is radiating from here. Great movement happens in the realm of movements. And, and an immeasurable joy. The consequences of life, life and death become meaningless. And yet, there is compassion and love and peace and joy, finally. But there is no one being attached to them. Like the flower is not attached to the fragrance, And that is my purpose, in some way, inviting you to keep looking. Just look. But the mind somehow is... And fear comes that if I completely go for that, then what's going to happen to all the things I have? said, even the one you think you are, who have things, is only an idea in your greater self. I cannot speak too much about it, because too much speaking then goes into the mind again. Mind is a wonderful tool, a wonderful aspect of consciousness. But when it is deeply connected to personal identity, it does not serve you well. 
because the modification called a person is the weakest link in the chain of consciousness. These are words. These are words. Hmm? What's wrong with the person? It's okay. It's, it's consciousness, but it's very limited. And you are not, in reality, this limited consciousness. Can you continue being a person? Well, yes, for lifetimes you can be a person. I am only saying, there is more to you than this. If there is an urge in you to discover, then something which I call grace will come to you to take you step by step in accordance with your capacity, to bring you closer to this truth until you are fit enough to dissolve your identity. But while we have identity, we have fear. This fear is there, that, but I don't know what's coming, you know? Well, do you ever know what's coming? <laughs> do you ever know what is next? We are only in love with the idea that we know. When you go to bed at night, was, was there a guarantee, you know, little note from God to say, See you in the morning? <laughs> no. But you go to bed and uh, you know, enter into deep states of uh, unconsciousness, because you have the, the sense, I woke up every day until today, why not tomorrow? Okay? And it's fine, it's fine. I don't want to put uh, thoughts in the <sighs> about fearful thoughts inside. But I am only saying that we live comforted by the apparent known, when all the while you are the unknown, actually. Endlessly, unendingly existing, confined to a, 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 a limited life in human concept called years. And you can live and die in your concepts, not knowing that you are the unlimited Self. And life is experience. It is also what you believe. What you believe, you believe into existence, and it becomes your experience. All this is the creation inside our mind. And it is okay, because God is there too. There is no urgency to wake up, unless there arises within you an urgency to wake up to the greater truth of yourself. There is no one telling you, wake up, wake up, wake up, you've got to wake up, you've got to wake up, because there are few awake enough to tell you that, and the ones who are awake is not telling anyone, you've got to wake up. Somebody else is saying that. Because the one who is awake knows that you are the Self. Dreaming, you are something else. Dreaming you are time and change. So this call to wake up must come from inside. And the urge to wake up comes from inside. And the waking up comes from inside. If I keep on talking, we meet a realm of paradoxes, which the logical mind is going to say, I don't understand. So I don't want to speak many, many words about it. If you are hungry, and you come to me hungry, I don't want to show you a cookbook. If you are hungry, you want to eat. If you are starving, you won't say, Is it gluten free? <laughs> I like to eat with people who are starving, hungry. When they ask, If you are dying of hunger, 
You say, can I have a knife and fork, please? <laughs> no, I don't think so. You will just eat. But uh, when we feel, you know, we are into, into spirituality and uh, we want to do lots of things, that's okay too. That's the dance of the manifestation. But when someone comes and say, please help me because my mind is so confused and I, 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 I'm drawn to something you say, but I feel, then I say, okay, sit, let's have a cup of tea. We can have a talk. And you may not drink that tea. It may get, go cold in your hands because you are so absorbed, you are so here, and you discover who you truly are. I am not getting commission pay for this. I am not in a hurry. I don't pre-select, or oh, I like you, I want you to be away. I am just here. You are coming, you talk. I don't see any impediment, naturally. I don't see anything that really blocks you for who you are. But I see that you believe there is. And because you believe there is, we just try to, say, to show you where there really isn't. That the place you are trying to get to, is actually where you are, but you don't even know that you are here. I don't speak any religion to you. I am not against religion. Religions are roads also that guide the beings to come to discover this. I speak to you like I speak to you. I could speak with any human being because I don't see that I have to put in front of you a condition before you can discover this. So wherever you come from, even an atheist, I will sit and talk to you if you are open. Because you may come to find that there is no atheist. But it's not my goal only to show or to help you to find what you truly are beyond your idea of who you think you are and to discover the wonderfulness and the purity of consciousness which I call God and Truth. And something inside us fights to keep being human, to keep being this person, nothing wrong with human, but the person. Nothing even wrong with the person. It's meant to be playful. It could be playful, but when we take it to be actual, then trouble comes. There's nothing that you need to change, or to fix, or to become, or to leave, or to repair or to create, in order to be what you are. You only have to be open, and to look, and to follow, to see the things that make you, that distract you from what you naturally are, and when they are pointed out, and you see. But if you have an investment in the life, I want this, and I will warn you about this, because for many people, we are imagining that something in life is going to make you really happy, forever. But nothing in the life is forever, because this is a constantly changing field. And even the you is also changing. Except that within you, there is the unchanging, which if you discover the unchanging, you may enjoy to your heart's pleasure the changeful, without being captured by it.
Thank you, Muji, for bestowing the blessing of grace upon us. Thank you for being with us and guiding our seeing. Thank you for letting your truth resonate in our beings and shake up false ideas. Not always. Sometimes we don't want our ideas to be shaken up. Sometimes if we are strongly attached to identity, you don't want your attachments to be disturbed. And I'm not here to shout and say, No, if you want that, you have the right to have that. Just that you are aware of the costs, actually, of holding on to that which is born of time and thinking that that is something eternal. Just, just to see. Thank you for letting truth resonate in our beings and shake up false ideas. Thank you, Muji, for including us all around the world in your satsang. Thank you, Muji, for inspiring love and courage in our hearts to let go of what does not serve us anymore. Yes, this is true. Thank you for making your expression of grace available on YouTube. Thank you for touching us beyond concepts and sharing in the quiet peace of our being. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being in satsang and sharing your presence. Thank God, thank grace, thank everyone for your blessed inquiry and untainted seeing. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for making the satsangs and videos possible. Gratitude and love, Constantine. <laughs> Dear Smuchi, I am watching the broadcast from Rishikesh. My mind seems to be scrambling the words you are saying, and I'm having difficulty hearing what you're saying. This is also commenting. Commenting, actually. This thing, this operational system inside that we call mind, especially when we have a strong relationship with mind around our identity, it is as though there is this force inside you that is not for you. It appears to be for you. And as soon as something comes to wake you up of the sleep of these ideas and limitations, it's as though some nastiness begins to come. If you are not open to experience that and to go beyond that, then of course you may feel, ah, I'm not really interested in that kind of stuff, and that's fine for me also. But sometimes you may find you come to satsang and it's just like, the mind is like, and just think, oh no, sorry, sorry, I got to get out. I, my mind is not permitting me to be in satsang today. Sorry. You go to chai shop. My God, can I have uh, some vegetable stir fried rice? Yeah. Chai shop wala say, oh, you're looking very happy today. Yes, okay. <laughs> I'm out from over there. I know, it's fine. Yeah, that's true. I have an urge to get up and walk away, but I'm making myself sit and stay with it. I understand there's a part of me watching this happening, but the ego forces seem to overpower this understanding for now. For now. Because great is the power within you, but you are unaware of it. At least you come to see that there is a little bit of an enemy within. <laughs> but I don't want you to be afraid. Ultimately, these forces, you will use them to go higher and higher, actually. It seems strange. It seems strange. 
Why isn't it not easy? You don't appreciate what's easy, actually. You see? Listen to this one. This is from G E A N N E, how you say? Genie? I don't think it's a genie. Jean, Jean, Jean. You see, we don't. Okay. No. Listen to the letter. It's a short one. I am watching the broadcast from Rishikesh. Come here. He says, "Why not just come here?" Okay. Maybe can't come. Okay. I am watching a broadcast from Rishikesh. My mind seems to be scrambling the words you are saying. So I'm saying. You are the self, and the man is going. You're the self. <laughs> what do you say? Okay, it does that. It does that. Okay. My mind seems to be scrambling the words you're saying, and I'm having difficulty hearing what you're saying. I'm speaking softly. I am sitting here. Okay, your mind will do that. The mind will do it, <laughs> so that you. <laughs> Pardon? You are not your mind. What? <laughs> oh gosh, I tell you, even that is showing something. Somebody else come and say, you know, let's go party. Let's go party. Yeah. <laughs> you are the unchanging reality. <laughs> what? <laughs> so only for a while, okay? Now second paragraph. <laughs> I have an urge to get up and walk away. Walk away from what? From <laughs> to go into the kitchen and have a cup of tea. Okay. All right. So I have an urge to get up and walk away, but I'm making myself sit and stay with it. That's good. Commendable. Okay. Why are you doing this? Because you must be mistrusting that. Is 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 speaking English enough? But something doesn't want to hear his English. Okay. But I'm making myself sit and stay with it. I understand there is a part of me watching this happening from a deeper place. You know, I can watch this play. This play. It's probably not the first time it has happened. But the ego forces seem to overpower. This understanding, the ego power, hmm? the ego forces seem to seem to good one overpower this understanding, and I say, for now, stay with it. Don't run away, because if you run away, the thing you're running away with is the thing you should be running away from. Okay. Okay. I have an urge to get up and walk away, but can you walk away from your mind? But I'm making myself sit and stay with it. Keep sitting and stay with it. Same thing with invitation. Sometimes people sit and they're listening to the invitation, and they're. I said, "What is going on with these people? Mind is." Arguing why, as I pointed out, there is a force functioning within us that is not cooperating with any urge to be free. Okay. As long as you stay in the position of personhood, you will start to feel you like, well, you know what? I just can't do that. Let me go and sing some bhajans or do some so because that's not going to challenge you. Oh, that's fun. The mind will even enjoy. But when you are pointed at the thing that you need to see, I'll read the book, okay? Because I can't listen to the satsang. 
I understand there is a part of me watching this happening. I understand I'm not present at that place. I understand there is a part of me watching this happening, but the ego forces seem to overpower my understanding. Are you now seeing this? Are you in support of your ego? Maybe for years you never questioned it. You never questioned it until the day came that you sensed that it is possible to go beyond this life created in your head. And then all this comes. In different cultures we say, that's the devil. Or somebody will say, yeah, that's just your distorted perception. Use whatever words. But it is like that. No? But the ego forces seem to overpower this understanding, and I say, for the time being, stay with it. I would invite you to come to satsang and sit right here. And don't think that you are going to have to do this for the next six months, next six years. No, it could be just one day or so. I can't make it one day. If something is open in you, you may go beyond this like this. You can just go beyond it. But if something is invested in your own personal self-interest or projection, then somehow you are also supporting the ego's campaign. Actually, in reality, it doesn't exist. It's an homegrown delusion. Please pray for me. All love, Janie. Janie. Jane. Okay? That's Jane. So, my response to this is that this letter reveals very much some of the kind of plays that goes on through the mind. You'll be sitting down thinking, yeah, I don't agree, and la 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 la, you know. I am only showing. You say, I want to go to this uh, to the kitchen. Where is it? I don't have to ask you to go to university to learn how to read the map to go to the kitchen. I said, it was right there. He said, but where? I said, there. I said, but how do I? Get? I said, come with me. Let's go. I'm a simple man, simple language, easy. We don't have to go into great philosophical, spiritual philosophy. It is simple enough, if what you want is to awaken to the truth of who you are. If you want to develop spiritual powers and stuff, I'm saying, actually, I'm not your guy. I'm not really interested in that. You know? I just love to see a human being who is themselves in the heart. You, what does it mean? All the powers in the world you can have and still not be free. All the powers. You may fall in love also with your sadhana. You may love, fall in love with your sadhana. You want to just... Yeah. <laughs> and is it fine? Of course it's fine, if that's what you want. But is it freedom? No, it's not freedom. Maybe freedom is not really what you want. Maybe you get spiritual friends and you think of people and they call you and you think, oh, you know, yeah, this is fine. People enjoy this also. But I'm only speaking to the ones who want to go beyond all of this circus from the mind. And that's it. And for them, it is not really that difficult, actually. Sometimes we have to suffer our mind's projections before you are ready to leave them and to go beyond them. Like this. So, Jane, I would say, if you can, unless there's a real reason why you cannot, and you don't have to. There are many people who are watching via broadcast who cannot come here. Is the chance as equally real for them? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Even if you live on the moon, <laughs> and you are over, yes, it is, because you can be here and don't get it, and somebody in Australia in the bush, yeah, get it. It's, it's nothing to do with distance. 
It is to do with somehow maybe the earnestness, the openness, I don't know, like that. Somebody over there? Okay, come on this one. Red shirt. No, you're wearing white shirt. Hello, Muji. Hello. So today I felt like there is something that I need you to help me to to clear. Yes. You said that uh, I look at my hand, and my hand doesn't look at me. But uh, when you look at me, I also look at you. So it's, uh, it's like uh, the eye that looks from the stage here and the eye that looks from here on the stage, it has to be, it has to be the same eye. But it seems like this feeling is mixed up with logical con conclusion. It's not clear. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you can make it more clear. You say the eye that is looking from that perspective of, of, of uh, yes. the body and the eye that's looking from this perspective of the body, they must be the same thing. Is that what you say? Yes. You must look from the yes. same place. Yes, yes. It's not like looking at your hand. Okay, okay. They are looking uh, uh, through consciousness. Yes. They're looking as consciousness. Yes. Yeah. That is not everyone's perspective. In order to, to say what you're saying, you must cut out a lot of things because some people say, the way I look and the way you look are different. I disagree with you and blah, 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 blah. And we can fight and we can talk and we can blah, blah, And at the end, we both leave with a headache or whatever it is, okay? <laughs> For what you actually say, if you understand that the place where your eye sense is arising from must be the same place where my eye sense is arising from, then we can have a more purer conversation. We don't have to talk about, well, you were born in this country, I'm born in this country, we have different outlooks, because we can just wash all that away. If we can wash away the things that appear to be differences, because they are not significant for a real understanding to, to, to happen, where are we left that we can speak from now? If the distance, the country doesn't matter, where we come from, and obviously the language doesn't matter between you, you and me, where we come from, okay? The fact that I've got a male body, you've got a male body, does not make a difference where we, from where we are speaking. Your experiences about life and blah, 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 and my experience about la, 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 at a superficial level is not in the way. Where can we begin to converse now? But on the physical level, I'm not experiencing that I'm sitting on, on the stage. Neither am I. <laughs> uh, it's not important for me that I'm sitting on a stage. I'm not different because I'm sitting on a stage. I may speak a bit more slowly because there are many people and maybe I speak a bit more slowly. Yeah? But it's, it's, not, uh, it's not important that I'm sitting on the stage. If I'm sitting over there in the room or a table, I will talk with you the uh, same way, maybe without microphone, but it's the same thing I'm speaking with you. I mean that... I'm Listen, what do you really want to know? Because is this so significant? Go to what you really want to know. Let me help you. If today was your last day, if your doctor told you, today is your last day, okay? So from now you have about sort of like just over 12 hours of the day left. Yeah, I, okay? I can feel that. <laughs> okay. 
So, I mean, that's been very generous because nobody else is told they got 12 hours. I think that's very generous. You got 12 hours of your life left, okay? And you're asked, you have a wish. If you could have a wish, uh, any wish, okay? Would you need some time to think about it or you can get to something? What would you want? What, is, what do you really want? Because I don't think this question is really deserving of the time we have here to talk about. Get to the heart of it. What do you want? What matters for you? Not to be limited by the twelve hours. I mean, come on, give there it to me like give it to me like baby food. Give it. Everybody can understand. Go, just tell me what you want. Actually, not twelve. Twelve minutes. <laughs> Let's make it a bit. Uh, you know, still generous because. What I am pointing to, twelve minutes is enough time, actually. Plenty. From my point of view. And I'm not joking. If you have twelve minutes, we have plenty of time, if you are ready. Okay? From what I, uh, I have to share with you. But what do you want? And if you tell me, maybe I'll tell you, well, we don't have enough time for that. If you tell me that you want to become a professional football player, unless you're that already, I'll tell you, I can't help you, I'm not your guy. But tell me what you want. It's like suddenly something is on the way, in, in the way, and it's... you got 11 minutes. Yes. A lot of time to offer you. Just to get rid of that thing that is on, in the way. It's Let's make it a bit better. Let's say you have one minute. <laughs> one minute. Forty-five seconds. What's going on in your head? Probably like, mm, it's not enough time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's like, no, you're not going to make it, this feeling. You got thirty seconds. <laughs> it's not fun to do that, is it? Your mind is doing all kinds of uh, what, what, uh, uh, Why does that matter what your mind is doing? Why it matters so much what your mind is saying? It said the same thing yesterday. Where is the yesterday thing? It's nothing. Why, why are you giving so much importance what your mind has to say? Fifteen. It's like, it's like it wants to say, I'm sorry I can do it, you know, but I, I'm. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. What has not changed? In you. The mind's going, oh, but I can't do it. Oh, man, you know, please, can we go back to the twelve minutes? Yes. And something is, yeah, it's a bit unfair, Muji. You have time for this? You have time for this? Because that's not helping you. What is it in you that does not need help? 
What is it that doesn't take time, for whom time is not important? I know it is there. I know it's there. Even you who know it's there is not important. Yes. It's still mind. It knows uh, it's there. Uh, who is saying that? It or someone no, else? No, no, it's not it. Oh, I only want to talk to it. <laughs> you are a friend of it? <laughs> you work for it? None of this is you. None of this is you. You see, what we do, we engage the mind, our mind uh, conditioning that something seems to be wired into feeling that, you know, I am this person trying to get to the truth. I am not blaming, I am not accusing, I am not saying, look, you should be guilty, you are bad. No, no, you are the Self. Dressed up as a person, idea. I'm so separate. I'm trying to get there. Please bless me. I can get to you. All this is not this. Okay, we're playing a little bit, but I don't know what to do with you. All this, all the efforts are coming from mind also. Something is aware of the efforts being made by the mind. Something is aware of the efforts, the apparent effort actually, the apparent effort being made by the apparent person who is apparently separate from the Self it is. I feel like that it. this effort is like the biggest uh, obstruction, yes. like this effort, but yes. it feels like… Obstruction of what to what? Of what should be, but seems at this moment that it's like very deep under. Okay, maybe he's going to get it. Can you say what you said just now again? There's something that. <laughs> There's something that I felt that should be. <laughs> well, it's. Uh, Where's this laughter coming from? Where is it coming from? Yeah, yeah, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's different than a minute ago. It's. Yes. It's it's not the same now. Now it's different. now what? No, what? Now what is now? Now it's like uh, I can breathe. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Is it finished? <laughs> I, I feel it's uh, it, it's not it's not gonna finish. No, it never. This which one? Which one is not gonna finish? The, that I can breathe. <laughs> yeah, but uh, is that the goal? Something relaxed in you, because you could see the efforts being made by something to accomplish something which is completely. Uh, uh, made up. Something here, which just is. It just is. No? In front of it, apparently, we can speak like that, is this effort and this identity that's feeling like, you know, but there's something that blocks me from getting to there. And this is just imagination. 
It's a habit also. A habit and a belief. Yeah, I'm trying to get there, but this thing keeps coming up. And the one who is trying to get there is believed in that it is the actual one that you are. But you are the there that you are trying to get to. Being able to watch the idea of yourself making the effort to get to where you have always been and can never not be. Still something is saying, okay. <laughs> it's like that. It is like that. Habit. Force of habit. A horse of habit, you see, and something just say, it's not that easy. It's not that easy. I can't believe what he's speaking. It cannot be. How long I've been trying, how many books I've read, I've done so much yoga, I've done so much meditation, I'm just not getting anywhere. And that is believed. And that belief becomes your life and your sense of self. You see? Hmm. And that sense of the person is going to step away to find an easier practice. We are here, we are together. You step away to find an easier practice to get here. But we are here. I need to get away from here. Go on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are getting closer. I'm not making it. I'm just saying because I have to say, you know. Yeah, because the mind feels much happier in chai shop. But he says, "Look, you know, it's twelve or five. It's time for lunch. We are at the very edge of your discovery." Your mind will do it. This is the only thing you have to transcend, to overcome. Is this thing that keeps you on the road. It will always keep sending you on another journey, another time. I have been on retreats with people, and they say in the retreat, I have signed up for the next retreat. Okay? This is mine for you. I'm signed up for the next retreat. I said, Oh, so you're not going to do it this retreat then? <laughs> oh, I cannot laugh to hear things like that. Mm -hmm. Because this is our mind. It has no power without belief, without identity. A thought without identity or interest has no power. A thought with belief or identity can start a war. Belief. Yeah. You see? Mm. Is it your time? Yeah. Is it, is it your time? Or is tomorrow a better time? Is it your time? You see? Like that. Yeah. The mind seems to be afraid of you, Muji. Of course. Like, more I'm than used anything. To it. I'm used to it. Sometimes I feel I'm the most loved and the most hated. But I know it's a game. It's a game. The same one who say, Oh, Muji, I love you. When I turn around, <laughs> we are all Golem. <laughs> Golem. My precious. <laughs> Why you have that? <laughs> I don't trust you. And because I don't trust you, that's why we can get somewhere together. I don't believe what you say. Not yet. Not yet. Of course, the mind feels like this because we want our mind to be enlightened. And the mind is playing along. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I want to be enlightened, just not with him. <laughs> yeah. It's it's fine. It's good. It's okay. Thank you. No, don't go away. I want you say my mind is afraid. It is true. It is true. Where did you get your mind from? How did you get copyrighted mind? <clears throat> my mind. Why is it not just mind? Hmm? There's air. You breathe it in and it becomes my breath. You breathe it out. Can you find your breath anywhere? <laughs> There's mind. You take him in and say, My mind, and mind becomes minefield. It's true. It's mind, it's the way of mind. And a relationship that's created with a personal identity, it becomes it's like something just becomes crystallized in that way. We are just talking. We're just talking. That when you say my mind, it is just something that you're aware of. The more the more practice it becomes, the more identity goes there. Then of course, it becomes very particular, and you say my mind. But feel them. If you don't take ownership, then there's no need to say my. You may say me. If it's not attached to something, you don't say my. My means possessed. I mine, this is my chair, this is my paper, my. And if we don't touch attachment to something, what is there? The one who says my mind is aware of the play of the mind. Yes. The one who is aware of the play of the mind. Is it itself mind? No. No, it's not. It's only not if it's not invested in what mind says. If it's not invested, then it stands alone and apart from mind. It's true. Yes, it it sees the mind. Yes. Is it interested in the mind? Is it affected by the mind? The place I'm speaking from now. As long as it sees it, it is not interested. Actually, it's the other way around. As long as it keeps seeing it, there's a little bit of interest. You don't see what you're not interested in. You certainly don't register it. You see? The minute you say, My mind, it's almost you take on a responsibility. When mind just becomes a, a thought flow, something is aware of it, but there's no attachment to it, then the place that I'm pointing to is recognized to be, you know, nothing sticks to it, yet everything can dance in it, but nothing sticks to it, because it is not an object. When you say me, yourself, and it seems to have very strong attachment and association with the body, things can stick to that because it becomes a thing. You are not the thing your body is. And this all play of the mind and so on, and none of this would be possible if the mind did not have the power to imitate the Self. In order to play a game, that you who are the pure consciousness became the conscious presence and person, and then the mind could, you could have this relationship which has produced this world that you think you live in and see. You see I have the impression what I am speaking is very simple, but when we are trying to do it with identity, it seems almost impossible. And yet, it is not something that you are going to do, it is just your seeing. So, therefore, I 
recommend and encourage that you keep on listening to the invitation because it's almost like it's sweeping your house clean from these ideas and you come back to clear impersonal seeing impersonal seeing in impersonal seeing the sense of the person can appear but it doesn't overtake it is just another thing seen is today a good satsang yes thank you very good And you know, I would like to speak with you again at some point. I don't know when, but I just have this feeling because I see actually there's someone like you. I don't give up on you, you know. I, I would just love to speak to you again. Yes, yes, because it's not you know, it's not like you are some distance away. It's 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 you see, it's beings like yourself. I want to pull you in and 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 just to. Because I have so much love for you, because I know you got you have to see, you know. I love you so much, yeah. Muji. So you know, it's not like I'm saying, okay, you missed your chance. I say, no, no, we'll come back to this. Maybe enough for today. Hmm? And we are all like this. Hmm? I saw what happened, you know. That uh, so, uh, like I say, when I was uh, the first time at, sitting at Papaji's feet, you know, I could not really get it. I see that I was not learning a lot, but I was changing a lot. So the grace was on you. You see, you don't know how I, f I feel. Just so much more spacious, but I don't know what. You see, for a while, because you are still inside the pot cooking, you know, something cooking, and not everything in the pot cooks at the same time. So every now and again, God comes and takes one out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am going to call some. Someone is going to come and sing something today, and um, I would encourage you. I would encourage you because what I am pointing to hmm, is not going to bind you. It is so simple. I am not asking you to become anything at all. Not asking you to become anything at all. You see. Because that would be putting on you another burden. You are enough burdened. You are enough burdened. You know, we have had enough burden. I went walking in the forest, and I saw that they had a a mule, not the same as donkey. I think a mule is like between a donkey and a horse. They use the mules here. They are really strong workers. Donkey a bit more lazy, but uh, then they put so much sand in these bags and bricks, and the poor donkey is going up the hill, and he doesn't complain. He just and going up the hill, I saw that the man behind the donkey is holding on to the donkey's tail. So even the even the even he has to the donkey is pulling up the hill. We saw it together, no? With the donkey, all is heavy, and he's just doing. I mean, what choice he has anyway? You know? And even the tail, a little wave now and again. Even that he hanged the man behind the man, beating him, and holding the tail, having a ride on the tail along with everything. How fortunate to have a human farm. Maybe we were once donkey, maybe we were once a mule. How fortunate because in this farm the consciousness can contemplate itself. It can return to its source. It is possible to be in this life and to be totally free and at peace. Full of love, doesn't matter where you come from. Free. Hmm? Thank you, thank you.
darkness I saw no light I was all alone Searching and seeking to find you The people they tell me to run, run, run away. They will keep me down. But my father, he tell me to stay and rise and rise and rise and rise and rise and rise. And rise. We'll rise.
Love you, love you, love you. Wherever you are. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Shantima.